Hello, my name is Otto. Uh, today I've been wondering and why is it that 70% of all the matoke supplied in Uganda comes from the districts of Bushenyi, Chirihura, Mbarara and parts of Masaka. These were the traditional areas that did not supply bananas. In the 80s, early 80s, the traditional districts supplying bananas were Busoga and uh, Buganda and parts of Ankole. But today the trends have changed. Have you bothered to think why? Are you aware that the Matoke industry, as of the year 2006, was controlling 75 million US dollars of the export trade? There's been a big debate on uh, banana whales, what the scientists call banana xanthonomas whales, or BXM. This wild has affected the banana production in most of the traditional areas of the country I've just mentioned. The banana wild has affected trade uh, and production of uh, bananas in the Great Lakes region, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Uganda. But it should be of interest for us to observe the government intervention in the other African countries vis-a-vis -vis the government intervention in Uganda. Of interest to me, the government interventions in Uganda seem to have worked in the districts of Mbarara, Chirihura, Ntungamo, Bushenye, and parts of Masaka and has successfully failed in all other parts of uh, the country, leaving 70% of the banana trade a monopoly of these four districts. I used to naively think that uh, banana wild was a creation, a political creation. Because why would certain areas of the country not grow bananas and why would other areas of the country grow bananas? But I've come to realize that there has been mismanagement and not proper sensitization of the banana farmers. That is why today the traditional areas that grow banana, Buganda and Busoga, have declined to 30% and the non-traditional, by non-traditional I mean the areas as of 1987 that did not grow bananas are now excelling in the banana trade. I think there has been limited or no sensitization on BXM banana wild virus. Now, of interest to me in my country, in Uganda, is the interventions by the government. What has government done? Many district agricultural officers in other districts are not doing enough to promote the banana trade. The debate here of interest to me is that the government intervention is not appropriate in other parts of the country, the way it has happened in Rwanda, Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, and Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, the purpose of this debate is to challenge government and to challenge the people out there that something should be done about banana production also in the other parts of the country and not only in the West. For example, the presidential initiative of bananas. In 2005, our president launched an initiative which we call PIBIT on bananas. And this saw the opening of an industrial, a banana industrial park in Chirihura uh, district, which in the year 2006, Parliament of Uganda appropriated 40 billion shillings for the industrial park to grow. And out of that, over 4 billion shillings have been used to buy equipment that would uh, turn banana into flour, that would make instant porridge. So we want these initiatives also to be done in other parts of the country so that people can also benefit from the booming and big banana trade. The presidential initiative on bananas is being led by Reverend Professor Florence Muranga. It's a good initiative that should be supported. But my philosophical and political argument is that the initiative should spread all over the country so that these districts don't supply 70% of the matoke in the booming trade. For example, in the United States of America, they require 2 million tons of matoke every year. The matoke should be peeled and vacuum sealed before being exported. But I cry foul that the government intervention is skewed. The government intervention in this area is not national, it is skewed. For example, the factory supplying matoke 
to the US now is Mbarara fresh vacuum sealed matoke industry. Vasema. We also want to see a Soroti Shema. We also want to see an Arua Shema. We also want to see a Guru Shema. We also want to see a Kiboga Shema. This should be spread out because the constitution is clear that the government of Uganda should ensure balanced and equitable development. What's the way forward? Let me begin with sensitization. We should know that banana wilt is spread through two means. One, using tools. We share tools, sharing hand tools, cutting the banana stems in this, two, in, in this field and sharing the hoes and pangas in another field. That is one way of spreading the wilt. So these practices must desist. Second way in which the virus spreads is through insects, birds, bats, and other, other means. So certain areas, the production of bananas have, have declined because this information on how the, the bacterium is spread is not at the public uh, domain. So what should you do? One, you should disinfect farm tools. Two, you should avoid sharing farm tools. Three, when a banana is infected, you must cut the stems and dry it so that the wheels must not spread to the next crop or plant. Four, we must plant bananas and spread them and have good spacing among them so that the wheels don't spread in the plantation. Five, we must keep animals off the fields because they are the easiest way that they spread the wheels from one field to another. Six, there has to be early removal of the male buds from the bananas. Early removal of the male buds. Seven, there has to be single stem cells removal to avoid uh, the spread of the disease. And we also want to see government interventions in other areas, not only in the same area. There is need for sensitization. I have lately not been appearing on television programs, Frontline, Fourth Estate. Every day they are discussing politics, police station, human rights report. I want to be invited to those televisions so that we also start discussing economics. We need political economics. We don't eat justice, law and order. We don't eat police stations. We eat banana. We eat matogol. We eat beef. So there has to be a deliberate sensitization and programs by politicians to sensitize the people on what should be done to combat the spread of banana wheels. But the way things are being done now, there is high specialization in one area, but there is nothing being done in, in the other areas. And I also want to thank the people of uh, Western Uganda and college because they have embroidered, they have engaged these modern agricultural practices into their farm practices. They are hardworking. For example, I was in Chiruwara district. You cut a banana stem, you deliver it to the circle and they sell all the bananas at the same prices, 20,000 per bunch. So there are no price fluctuations. They are powerful and effective circles. There is also forward and backward linkage. The land is fertile because they control the cattle industry. They have readily available manure to put under the, 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 the banana stem. So as the Bible says, those who have will be given more and those who don't have, they will remove the little they have. Since they have cattle, they have plentiful of, of manure. So there has to be a deliberate effort to ensure that people are empowered to do the same things and we have supply of matoke from all over the country. We need a presidential and banana initiative all over Uganda and not in selective parts of Uganda. This is what, what is happening in Rwanda, in Burundi, in Democratic Republic of Congo, in Ethiopia, in Tanzania, and their success story in fighting the banana wheel is more trendy. So as a philosopher, we need economic justice. If you have ears, let's engage in these relevant practices. The leaders, the district agricultural officers must train people extensively so that growing banana becomes part of their culture, the way it has become part of the culture in Western Uganda. And this culture is just about 35 years old. Thank you for watching. Please share and please subscribe to my channel. Greetings from uh, Lisbon in Portugal. Thank you.